Hey everyone, so you've sent over this really interesting material on QNet. Yeah. It's a global company, been around for 26 years. Wow. And they're selling wellness and lifestyle products in over 100 countries through direct selling. That's impressive. Yeah, it really is a global reach. Yeah. And it's a model, direct selling, that's having a resurgence. It is. Especially now with the whole gig economy thing. Mm -hmm. So are you ready to take a deep dive into QNet and how it all actually works? Absolutely. Let's unpack it. Okay. So we've got all this material. Yeah. And the first thing that jumps out is how QNet is using this really old business model, mm -hmm. direct selling, which has been around forever. Right. But they've kind of put this modern spin on it. Yeah. Because now it's very trendy. It is. So it's interesting to see how they've kind of brought those two together. Absolutely. And I think what's fascinating is how it really bypasses the traditional retail setup. Right. You're not going to a store with QNet. Yeah. You've got these independent representatives they're selling directly to consumers. Yeah. And that's a really different experience. It is. Than, you know, like you said, just popping into a store, browsing the aisles. Right. This is much more personalized. Absolutely. And some of these sources even say that you can get products through QNet that you wouldn't necessarily find anywhere else. Exactly. It's like a curated shopping experience. Yeah. But with a person, a real human being guiding you through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like that human touch is back in a way. It is. And that's a huge part of the appeal. Yeah. Both for the people who are selling the products, the yeah. representatives, yeah. and for the customers too. Yeah. Because you've got people who are drawn to that flexibility of mm. setting their own hours, being their own boss. Yeah, that entrepreneurial spirit. Exactly. That's a big part of it. It's like that side hustle dream yeah. that everyone's chasing these days, right? Absolutely. But we do have to address the elephant in the room. Of course, yeah. There are some, you flagged some materials where there are some serious allegations against QNET. Yeah. Words like scam are being thrown around, pyramid scheme. Right. We definitely can't ignore that side of things. Absolutely not. And it's important that we don't shy away from those allegations. Right. Now, looking at the materials you provided, okay. one of the reasons these accusations exist is just the nature of direct selling itself. Okay. It's often misunderstood, yeah. especially as it gains popularity in emerging markets. Yeah, that makes sense. Where maybe people aren't as familiar with it yet. Right. It's like any new business model. There's always a learning curve. Exactly. Both for the people participating and just the public getting used to how it all works. Right. It creates a bit of a gray area, which doesn't help when you've got accusations flying around. Yeah. And unfortunately, gray areas can be exploited. That's right. And that's what some of these materials are saying. Yeah. That there are these unauthorized people yeah. trying to capitalize on QNet's name. Right. Use it for their own, you know, shady practices. Yeah. And then QNet ends up getting blamed. Yeah. Even though they might be trying to stop it. Exactly. It's like they're battling a shadow version of themselves. Yeah. So how are they trying to get ahead of that? Well, they're taking a multi-pronged approach, which I think is smart. Okay. Because it shows that they're trying to tackle this from all sides. Okay. One of the first things they've done is launch these public awareness campaigns. Okay. And we're talking in several different countries. Yeah. We're talking billboards, radio ads. They're all over social media. Wow. All with the goal of educating the public okay. about what a scam actually is, right. how to spot one, yeah. how to tell the difference between something shady right. and legitimate direct selling. So it's about empowering people with information. Exactly. Which makes sense, because if you know what to look for... You're less likely to be fooled. Exactly. Right. But it can't just be about telling people to be careful. Are they working with any, like authorities or organizations to really try to tackle this at a higher level? They are, and that's another part of their strategy. Uh, They've partnered with government agencies, consumer protection organizations okay. in different parts of the world. Gotcha. For example, you've got material here about their work with the Lago State Consumer Protection Agency. In Nigeria. Yes, in Nigeria. Yeah. And they're raising awareness about scams that are specifically using QNT's name falsely. So they're working within these systems to try to combat these issues. Exactly. They're not trying to shy away from it. That's a good sign. It is. But you've also got materials here talking about how the lack of regulation yes. in certain regions is part of the problem. Absolutely. That's a huge factor. So it seems like QNS is saying we need better regulation of this entire industry. You got, they're thinking about the big picture. Yeah. It's not just about protecting their brand. Right. It's about saying, hey, if we had clearer guidelines, if we had better regulation, it would weed out the bad actors and it would make it easier for the legitimate companies like QNet 
to operate. Right. It's about creating a more transparent ecosystem. Exactly. For everybody. For everyone involved. Okay. So we've got awareness campaigns. We've got collaboration. We've got this push for regulation. Mm -hmm. But to really understand this. Yes. We have to look at the products. The products. Absolutely. What is QNET actually selling? And that's where it gets really interesting because they're product portfolio is incredibly diverse. Yeah. It's not just one thing. Yeah. It's not just like one product line. Right. It's everything from wellness products mm -hmm. to home appliances. Right. All marketed through this network of people. Exactly. And it's interesting. You've got, for example, this Amesqua BioDisc. Interesting product. Yeah. It's supposed to like promote energy and well-being. Okay. Then you've got things like the home pure zane air purifier right we're supposed to have all this fancy antiviral technology yes they're really covering a lot of bases yeah it's a lot it is but here's the key thing okay they're not just throwing out these buzzwords okay they're backing it up okay for example their home pure nova water filtration system mm -hmm. that's received certifications from nsf international and the Water Quality Association. Oh, wow. So they're really going through the process of getting these independent verifications. They are. It's I mean, about credibility. That's huge, especially in an industry that sometimes, you know. Has a bit of a reputation. Yeah. That's so by getting those certifications, right. they're saying, look, we meet these globally recognized standards. It's about building trust. Exactly. Okay. So they're putting a lot of emphasis on ethical practices. Yes. On this responsible selling. Mm-hmm alongside the actual quality of their products. Right. But how do they make sure that all of these representatives, because they're all over the world. Yeah, that's the challenge. How do they make sure everyone's actually following the rules? That's where their training programs come in. Yeah. And this is what I think sets QN apart. Okay. They don't just give someone a catalog and say, good luck. Right. They have a system in place to right. give their representatives the knowledge and the tools right. to be successful ethically. Okay, that's good because it can be easy to get caught up in just making a sale. Absolutely. Without thinking about the consequences. Shortcuts. Yeah, exactly. So what they do... Yeah, what are they teaching? They're doing in-depth product knowledge, of course. Okay. They're teaching communication strategies. Yeah. But they're also emphasizing the difference between legitimate direct selling... Pyramid. And those unethical pyramid schemes. Right. Which is a really important distinction given everything we've been talking about. Absolutely. They're addressing it head on. So they're trying to educate their own people. Yes. On how to do this the right way. Exactly. That's big. It is. They even have what they call red lines. Red lines. Okay. These are the no-go zones for representatives. And hard boundaries. Hard boundaries. You don't cross them. So what are some examples? Well, one of them is making exaggerated claims. Okay about the products or about how much money you can make. Right, so no promising overnight riches. Exactly. Okay. Another big one is misrepresenting the compensation plan. Okay, so being upfront about how it actually works. Being honest, transparent. Yeah. That's key. Okay. And they also have a strict policy against registering people who aren't legally capable of making these decisions. So protecting vulnerable individual. Exactly. It's about ethical conduct on all fronts. That's good. Not just about the money. But it's one thing to have the rules. Are they actually enforcing them? That's the most important part. Yeah. And they are. They have a zero tolerance policy for violations. Okay. We're talking terminating distributorships. Oh, wow. Globally for unethical behavior. So they're serious about this. They are not afraid to cut ties, even if it means losing money. That's huge. That shows they're really <laughs> trying to walk the walk. Absolutely. Talk about it. Actions speak louder than words. Okay. So they're putting their money where their mouth is. And they are. But it's not just about like punishing people after the fact. Right. They've got this compliance hotline. They do. It's a direct line yeah. for anyone to report suspicious activity. So they're encouraging people to come forward? Yes. Transparency, accountability. That's good because it creates a culture where this is expected. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we've talked about their business model, these scam allegations, their efforts to be ethical, their products. It's a lot. It is. Mm -hmm. But there's one more piece. Okay. Their social impact. Yes, this is important. What are they doing to give back? So they have the RYTHM Foundation. RYTHM Foundation, okay. And this is really their way of putting their money where their mouth is when it comes to social responsibility. So it's not just a side project? No, it's core to who they are. Okay. RYTHM stands for Raise Yourself to Help Mankind. I like that. And they're aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Wow, so they're thinking big picture here. They are talking about... Poverty, inequality, 
climate change, wow. addressing these global issues. So they're not just picking one small thing. They're really trying to tackle. It's a holistic approach. Yeah, a holistic approach to social impact. And they've reached over 80,000 beneficiaries in over 15 countries. That's incredible. What kind of projects are they doing? Well, they get a diverse portfolio, which is great. Okay. It shows they're not just focused on one thing. They're supporting education, healthcare, disaster relief. Wow. Promoting sustainable livelihoods. They're all over the place. So they're really thinking about the needs of different communities around the world. They are. It's about understanding those nuances yeah. and tailoring their approach. Right. Because what works in one place might not work in another. Exactly. It's not one size fits all. Okay. So it's really interesting to see this other side of QAnet. Right. Because we started with these scam allegations. Yes. And now we're talking about them trying to make a real difference. Trying to be a responsible global citizen. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot to take in. It is. It's a lot of layers. It is. It makes you wonder, what does this all mean? What does it mean for QNet? What does it mean for the future of work? That's the big question, isn't it? It is, because you've got this rise of the gig economy. Absolutely. People wanting more control over their careers. More flexibility. And QNet, in a way, is tapping into that. They are. They're offering that platform for people to be their own boss. Yeah. To have that independence. But, as we've discussed, there are those challenges. There are those ethical considerations. So it'll be interesting to see how they navigate all of this. Absolutely. It's a story that's still being written. It is, and we'll be watching. We will. Like, one example I'm looking at right here. They did no. this whole thing for Ramadan. Okay. Where they were supporting families in need oh, all over the world. So they were thinking globally, but acting locally. Exactly, exactly. Which is really cool. It's not just about, you know, writing a check. Right. It's about understanding the cultural context. Yeah, that's a good point. And really trying to meet people where they are. Yeah, because a blanket approach doesn't always work. Right. You have to be sensitive to the specific needs of each community. Okay. So it's like they're trying to balance this global vision yeah. with these really localized efforts. And I think that's what makes it so impactful. Yeah. It seems like they're trying to be a responsible company. Yeah. Not just about the bottom line. Absolutely. But also about doing good in the world. And that's important these days. It is because people are paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. They want to support businesses that align with their values. Absolutely. Especially younger generations. Yeah. They're looking for companies that are doing good, that are making a difference. And it seems like QAnet is trying to appeal to that. Yeah. They're trying to tell a different story. Because we've got these scam allegations. Oh, right. And now we're talking about global social impact. It's a lot to process. It is. It's a lot to take in. But it shows the complexity of a company like QR. It's yeah. not just one thing. It's not black and white. No. There are a lot of shades of gray. So how do they manage all of this? Well, I think that's where the training programs and those yeah. red lines we talked about earlier, right. they become even more important. Okay. I see what you're saying. Because if they want to be seen as a leader in this space, right. they have to make sure everyone's on board. Right. They have to walk the walk. Exactly. It can't just be talk. It has to be everyone in the company from the top down. Absolutely. Okay, so we've talked about a lot. We have. We've covered a lot of ground. We've got these scam allocations. Yeah. We've got their products, their social impact. Their training programs, their ethical guidelines. What are the key takeaways here? For me, the biggest one is that QAnet is trying to redefine itself. Okay. They're operating in an industry with a lot of baggage. Right. Direct selling has a bit of a reputation. Yeah, it does. And they're trying to change that. They're trying to be more transparent, more accountable. So almost like setting a new standard. Exactly. They want to raise the bar. That's ambitious. It is, but it's also really important. Yeah, I agree. Because if direct selling is going to be a viable business model in the future, right? it has to be done ethically. Okay. So they're thinking long term. They are. They're playing the long game. It'll be interesting to see if they can pull it off. It will. It's a story that's still being written. It is. And we'll be watching to see what happens next. Me too, because this is just the beginning. Yeah, this is a conversation that's not going away anytime soon. Absolutely not. It's only going to get bigger. Okay, well, on that note, we'll leave you to ponder all of this. Yes. Think about it. Do your own research. And let us know what you think. It's like looking through a kaleidoscope, you know? Yeah, lots of different facets. You've got this company, QNet trying to be this global force, mm -hmm. but also trying to make a difference in these individual communities. It's a tough balance to strike. It is. And then you throw in the direct selling aspect. 
Right, with all its complexities. It's a lot to unpack. It really is, and I think it speaks to this larger conversation about <sighs> what it means to be a company today. Okay. Like, is it enough to just make a profit anymore? Right, consumers are demanding more. They are. They want to know what you stand for. Your values. Exactly, and how you're contributing to the world. So it's not just about the bottom line. It's about the triple bottom line. People, planet, profit. Exactly. And that's a lot for any company to manage. It is, especially a global one like QNet. With all those moving parts. So where does this leave us? I think it leaves us with more questions than answers. Which is kind of how these deep dives usually go. It's true, but that's the point, isn't it? To spark conversation, to make you think. To get people digging deeper. And to question the status quo. Exactly, because the world is changing. Work is changing. And we need to be having these conversations. Absolutely. So thank you for going on this journey with us. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's been a wild ride. Exploring QNET, direct selling, social impact. And the future of it all. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder all of this. Until next time. Thanks for listening, everyone.